Welcome back to part two of Figured Base. Uh, it's a really exciting lesson. We have a lot to cover, so I'm, I might even do four, four lessons. Uh, if I miss anything or if there's any notation that I haven't covered, um, please uh, reach out, mention it in the comments. Okay, so we're, we're going to get into uh, to seventh chords today starting with the major minor seventh chord now with the major minor seventh chord just as we're, we're talking about the dominant seven and there might be a little bit confu confusion as to why it's called the dominant seven so basically whenever we see a major minor seventh chord which is a major triad with a minor third on top so in this instance in the key of c the five seven is g b d and f that's that's a major minor seventh chord and whenever we see a major minor seventh chord in common practice it is always a five seven it is always a dominant seven that's why it's called a dominant seven um, and here's the thing that that that's confusing sometimes when we're in the key of C and we see a, a, a D mi major minor seven so D F sharp A and C we might be tempted to say it's a two seven there's no such thing as a two seven as, as at least as far as major minor seventh a two seven is actually going to be a five of five um, so D is going to be the five of G which is a five of C so it's always going to be a five of something when we see this chord here in any context now with the other types of seventh chords that we'll get into in the next lesson that doesn't apply um, they can be on different scale degrees and we'll, we'll talk about that sort of thing um, in the next lesson but so technically the the five seven is the five seven five three so what we're doing is we're breaking down the intervals um, downwards so there's a seventh an inter interval of a seventh based on the scale um, what so we're on the fifth note of the C scale and we're building a seventh on top of that, a fifth below that, and a third below that. So it's a seven, five, three. But we can leave out the five and three and just call it a five, seven, and assume that it means a root position a dominant seven chord. So now we get into the inversions. So if we take this G and move it to the top, uh, then we end up with this chord here. This is a first inversion dominant seven chord and what what we what we do is we call it a five six five three so we have a six a fifth and a third but we're going to omit the third because the six and five are what make this unique and so we're, again we're taking the the shortcut um being being more efficient so the six five uh, i'm sorry the five six five is going to be the dominant seven in first inversion so we're just calling it the we build a sixth and then the fifth and then we assume the third similarly the five six four three or the second inversion so we have a six a fourth and a third but the six isn't really what makes it unique it's the four and three so we're gonna shorthand it and call it a five four three um, for second inversion and then you can probably follow the logic um, for, for the third inversion. We have moved the D onto top and we end up with a 5 4 2 chord for the third inversion. So when we see that, we're going to assume that there's a sixth on top because the all the inversions have a sixth on top. So you stack a sixth and then a fourth and then a second and we're good to go okay so now um, in the key of a here is the five seven chord it's going to be the e major minor seven <clears throat> along with its inversions now in Figured base. This is what we're going to see. We're going to see a, five, a seven five sharp three. So wherever the sharp appears, like over here, we see the sharp in front of the six. That tells us that it's the, the interval of a sixth that we raise. 
whereas over here it's the third that we raise. So if we see this 7, 5, sharp 3, that tells us that we're going to build a 7, 5, 3, or root position 7th chord. Um, so real, real quick, just as a side point. The 5, 3, like I mentioned up, up um, just previous, we do a shorthand and we just call it a 5, 7. And that's actually still the case with figured base, but in the case of some alteration, then we will specify the whole thing because we have to specify at which interval that chromatic altering occurs. So if you just see a seven below it, you're good. Like you just build, you stack thirds until you get to the seventh and there's no altering needed. But because we're altering the third, we have to specify um, the whole chord. So we're going to specify that it's the third that's raised or the G sharp. Similarly, with this one, um, you're not, you don't really see a first in the chord, so there's not really any way to indicate that the sharp is sharpening the, the bottom note. So we sharpen the note itself, and we assume that um, then we just build the 6-5 on top of that, um, like we saw above. And similarly, the even though we call this just the 5, 4, 3, because we're specifying that it's the interval of a 6 that we're raising, we have to add the 6 to it for both of the second and third inversions. So um, if we're altering any of the, of the tones in the inversions or even in the root, then we have to specify a little bit more information. All right. Let's see. I think yeah we'll we'll cover we'll cover the two other types uh, or the or the other types of seventh chords and then we'll save some of the application for the the final or the next video I don't know yet how how many this is going to turn into so I've included just to be thorough the major major seven um, this we are not going to see in common practice. And by common practice, again, I mean early music, Baroque, classical, romantic. Um, it's going to start appearing in jazz and jazz-influenced music, even some 20th century uh, classical music that was kind of jazz-influenced. Or, um, but it does it doesn't really apply to what we're talking about here, but I, I'm just including it to be thorough. So the major minor seven, that's the dominant seven. So in the key of C, we would see, um, you know what? We're not even gonna get into the keys. I, I just wanna cover the basics here. The the types of seventh chords, the major minor seventh. Um, so that's a major triad with a minor third on top, a minor minor seventh. So that's a minor triad with a minor third. So for instance, a G minor triad with a an F natural on top. Half diminished, it's a, a more exotic sounding chord, uh, half, half diminished seventh rather. Pop, very popular in the Romantic period. Uh, but basically you have a diminished triad on the bottom and then a major third on top. So in this case, G, B flat, D flat, and F. So one of the interesting things about this, you have this tension on the bottom from the, the diminished triad, plus you know, also you have the tritone here, but then you have a minor triad on top, and it gives it, gives it that kind of in-between feel. And, and so you notate that with a, kind of like the diminished, the circle that we saw earlier, like over here, but with a slash through it. So that's going to be half diminished. And then fully diminished, seven would be all minor thirds. So G, B flat, D flat, and F flat. So, um, so that's, that's our introduction into seventh chords. I hope it was helpful. Um, and I will see you next time for uh, furthering the application.